And glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is our ongoing formation series. You'll hear Father William Healy. Keep him in your thoughts and prayers along with Father Deany. This is our Flint effort. And we're going to hopefully translate this into Asian country languages, Chinese, Cambodian, Malay. And we're sharing our community with yours. Bring to you our Carmelite formation from Flint, Michigan with Father William Healy. This is our November the 9th, 2002 meeting at St. Michael's Church, Flint, Michigan, and the Flint OCDS formation. We want to welcome all the new communities in the area, including Hamburg, Michigan, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Ada Parnell, the Burton community, and of course, the Columbia community. We want to thank you for your commitment to the Carmelite Order, and we ask you for your continued prayers for all the communities in the uh, province, and particularly the apostolates that are taking place, and the communities in Atlanta, Georgia, and Little Burton, Georgia. I give you now Father William Healy, who is stationed at St. Florian's in Milwaukee and comes to us on a monthly basis and keeps each and every one of the listeners uh, in, their, in his prayers and remembers them in his masses. Thank you. Father Healy. I'll start with the prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your divine love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of your faithful, Give us by that same Holy Spirit a love of what is right and just and a constant enjoyment of his comforts through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before anything else, I want to wish you a holy and a happy Thanksgiving Day. And I want you to know that we may be in separate states on that day, but wherever I am, you're united in the Mass and in any celebration that the fires put out, because you are in our family of Carmel, and you are our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. So you see, you mean a great deal to us, and so when I wish you a happy Thanksgiving, it not only comes from me, but from every one of our friars. God bless you. I always like to read about spirituality to see how it conforms with the spirituality you and I have in Carmel. And just recently, our beloved Archbishop, Timothy Doran, Dolan, has written a book. And it's called The Priest in the New Triennium. And it is a series of conferences he gave while he was a rector of the seminarians in the North American College in Rome. As I read the conferences, I come to the conclusion that all spirituality is blended in what we're trying to get across to you in the course of your prayer life and in the course of our conferences. So for instance, the first requisite for a Carmelite and you're all, you're all included, of course, because you belong to the family, is a loving acceptance of God's love for you. That seems easy for me to say, but so many people are bowing their heads and they acknowledge their faults as they should but they forget the love of God. 
The Pope, in his last uh, meeting with the youth in Toronto, passed this on. Please take it to heart. You are not the sum of your faults and defects. You are the sum of God's love for you and your capacity to imitate Jesus Christ. Therefore, if you honestly and truthfully accept this love, not just in a sentimental way, but that he's thinking of you night and day, one God and three persons, wherever you happen to be, whatever circumstances you must face. And as we pointed out in your working and sleeping hours, and you honestly believe that his love for you is as personal as individual as if you were the only one he ever made, then life takes on an entirely new meaning. It doesn't mean that you'll be without crosses, for the Lord Jesus fell three times behind, before his, under his cross, and he taught you and he taught me that the cross forms a key that unlocks for us the treasures of heaven and makes us saviors of others as he embraced the world and shed the last drop of his blood for the salvation of the human race. Accept that love is the first premise. You will learn it in your articles of the secular order. And the second part is that you will give in to contemplation. We don't mean the highest forms of mystical contemplation, if God, unless God wants to give that to you because of your efforts. But contemplation, as you very well know, is just a loving awareness of God's presence, emphasizing what I said before, that he's with you always. So Archbishop Dolan, when he was a teacher of the, the rector, or rather, of the North American College in Rome, said this to his students, you're going to hear about Christ. You're going to study about Christ. But he said, I ask you men, the gentlemen, do you honestly and truthfully know Christ? And he continued, that can only come by your prayer life. He said, when, when you became deacons, you promised you would say the office every day. Officia means an office. And you're saying it and reciting it for the entire church. And you're not to give it up, but to persevere. But you honestly talk to Jesus in your own words, in your own way. And why do I say this resembles our Carmelite life? Because that's exactly what Teresa of Avila taught. Bring Jesus before you in your imagination. Bring him before you in a picture. But talk to him. And give him a chance to answer. And if at that moment he doesn't say a word, it's because you've overpowered him, if I may use the expression. <laughs> And he is to accept, and he does, each thought you gave and each moment of time. I try to get this across to anyone who drives me anywhere. 
<laughs> I hope I don't drive you crazy. <laughs> like the good president, she waited for hours for the train yesterday. I firmly believe she's blessed for each moment that she waited and for each turn of the four wheels. And then there's LT who takes me from here to Detroit. I really believe that. Because Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of my brethren, you do unto me. And so in this contemplation, which is a loving awareness of the presence of God, your first and foremost duty is to find the three divine persons in yourself. You were made by God, and as the book of Genesis puts it in the, sto the story of the creation, as if the, the author is reading a litany, he says, unto the image of God was man created. Unto the image and the likeness of God you were created. And this isn't pride. It's humility. Because you're accepting the gift of God's love for you, personally and individually. You acknowledge it then by your prayer. As Paul the VI so beautifully put it, all that's necessary is that you say yes to God each day, accepting whatever is going to happen, accepting his love, accepting life itself. That's why I say you're living in a realistic world. Your motive for living in the revelation that's yours and finding God in all things is a gift from God himself. And all of this you have strengthened through the scapular you wear and the consecration that you make. Now when I said you should talk to God in your own way, face to face, and be your own honest and good self, I take to heart the wonderful example Archbishop Dolan puts in his books. He said, the personal secretary of Pope John XXIII loves to repeat this story. About midnight, John the 23rd would go before the tabernacle. He would kneel there and recall all the events of the day. The example the personal secretary gives, one bishop will come and say, all of the priests in my missionary, in my mission territory have been killed and the nuns have been raped. Another leader from a, state, a nation will come and beg for prayers because the nation is on the edge of, edge of war. The Russians, for instance, would go, they, they would come and ask for prayers for the nation, for their country. Not to mention the countless blessings he had to give throughout the day. Well, he took all these things to heart, reviewed them before the tabernacle, and then he would add, I did the best I could. <laughs> it's your church. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> Good night. Now, can you get any more realistic than that? I imagine that you might have that familiarity with Jesus and Mary, no matter what you're facing in your life. You, mu you must remember that the whole New Testament is based on the eight Beatitudes. 
not what goes on around you, but on your attitude towards yourself and towards the things that go around you. And the first word of the Beatitude, blessed, does not mean being happy with a Colgate smile. It's an interior disposition of joy in which you rise above the circumstances by your attitude and you find the presence of God in them. Joy then, according to our Archbishop, is something deep. It's a gift from God. And it will be with you at all times, even in joy and so-called sorrow, if you can recognize the companionship of Jesus Christ, to whom you've given yourself, on the day of the profession, to the blessed Trinity who honestly dwells in every part of your person, and to Mary Immaculate, who made the very robe that you wear, so you see, I have every wish, I have every reason for wishing you a thanksgiving. To be grateful for all that God has done, all that he is doing, and all that he intends to do for you until you meet him in the kingdom of heaven. God bless you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We put this into the public domain. We hope to use artificial intelligence, AI, to translate this into the languages of the Asian countries, China, <coughs> both mainland, Taiwan, along with uh, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Philippines, I, I'm Malaysia, Indonesia. Keep all the Christian community in your prayers there. And uh, if you're hearing this for the first time, we have been praying for you. We know that you're suffering. We know that in many parts of the world, the church is suppressed. We have suppressed Catholics and suppressed Carmelites right here in Michigan and the United States. And we have our mutual experience that we join and we meet at the cross of Christ. So we pray for your peace, that your existence will thrive, your faith will be bright, and your efforts at love will brighten its flame. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.